Here we have another of those images where the content and the general lack of colour tends to push my thoughts towards a monochrome image. I think the image here has a fair degree of contrast and sparkle already, but then it was shot straight into the light, albeit with the sun hidden behind the artwork. However, one of the issues I always find myself grappling with is how to make my photograph of a common and well photographed subject stand out from the crowd. Many people will recognise this shape instantly as the Angel of the North which stands alongside the A1 on the road to the northeast of England. But for my Australian friends, those two figures walking up the hill towards it give it the scale. It's massive. So how do we make this stand out from the crowd? Well, I think first of all we'll make a sparkling monochrome, but I don't think that's going to tax us too much because all of the qualities are already there. I think if we take away the saturation, a little bit of clarity, a tiny tweak of the whites and blacks, and we're going to get a pretty good black and white. And the silhouette shape helps enormously, of course. Then perhaps we can look at the flood filter, but I'll introduce you to that just a little later on. Let's make a start by going to the option of lens corrections to tick the box to remove chromatic aberration. Back into the basic tab to remove the saturation. Straight away we can see the qualities of this black and white coming through pretty strongly because the light was much more in our favour. But I'm going to look at giving this a little bit of clarity. Looking up at the histogram, you can see it's stacked up on the left hand side, but then we do have quite a few dark tones in the statue itself and also the foreground. But nevertheless, we may be able to move the exposure to the right. Now to make sure we don't burn out any detail, we can go up to the top right and check this little square, you see it lights up for us. Then we know if we go too far, and I have to go quite a way here, we get a visual indication of where we're physically losing detail. And here you can see that the raw file has a lot of data because I can actually make the image far too bright and still not lose any of the detail. And that's not a bad thing. Let me double click this. Another way of doing this is just holding the Alt key whenever we do this. And we see this in a slightly different way, but it amounts to the same thing. But we don't need to go that far, so perhaps all we need to do is follow our nose, or should I say our eyes, and lift the tones to get that black and white sparkle. Do we need to do anything with the whites? Well, if you look at the histogram, it's virtually meeting the other side. I can try it, and I can hold the shift key at the same time just to make sure there's the limit. Let's come back, or I should say there's the limit. So I could come back a little bit away from that. So I'm pretty confident here, with the help of the histogram and those warnings, that I've got as much sparkle in this picture as I can get. But of course we've all got a personal view, haven't we? And sometimes we like our images a little bit stronger in tone. So there's no problem in just tweaking them to suit what you find visually appealing. Now if you looked at the metadata when I had this image open up into Bridge, not only can you see what shutter speed, aperture I used, the camera, the zoom lens that I used, but even the focal length that we chose to put on the zoom. In this case, you would have noticed it was 16mm. Now with a 16mm lens, and you can see some information up here, you can see I've got quite a wide aperture here. It was blowing a gale and I could hardly keep still. So I chose a very fast shutter speed and I felt 5.6 was more than enough to keep all of the image sharp. So 5.6 may not show too many dust spots in the sky. But generally speaking, I normally have quite a few because I do change my lenses often and it's been a long time since I cleaned my camera. So I'm going to take a quick look using the healing brush. 
I'm going to go down to the bottom of the healing brush panel because we have a little box which allows us to visualize the spots. Now as soon as we do that we get a slider so we can adjust it to suit but I think it generally I find it needs to be up fairly high. But straight away I can see a few. You see little what looks like donuts and you can see one there, one there, one there and one down there. I'm not sure all of these are dust spots but they look like they probably need to go anyway. So what I'm going to do here is touch the control and the space bar and we should get the zoom tool. Let's zoom in just a little bit and there we can see those little marks. I'm going to adjust my brush a little bit and give a click. We can hide the little healing point. That's the point that's being repaired. That's the point that's doing the repair. 999 times out of a thousand Photoshop will get this right but if it doesn't you can click and move these around both of them in fact and we can also hit the V key and sometimes I find that is useful because I can just click around remember what we're doing here is not cast in stone there's one down there it's not cast in stone so if we look at the picture in a little while and we find we want to take one of these back it's dead easy to do now that's probably not a dust spot but it's obviously not going to be a major part of my image so I'm going to click and drag on this you can see we don't just get the opportunity to click now let me touch the V key because that didn't do such a good job so I can move that up to there give it a second to do its job and it's still not doing its work let's uh, get this down a bit further doesn't seem to want to fix that for me for some particular reason let's try again okay let's not worry about that we'll come back to it a bit later let me click that one that one and that one we'll risk doing these in a line across the top and see if it can do a better job see it's done a better job there let's click that pin liven it up hit the delete key I'm going to do that once more. It did a better job that time. Let's move up to the other end. I think I may have seen one or two. I don't think they're dust spots down there, so maybe not. Perhaps we've got all of the dust spots. There's a little spot there. I'm not sure what that is, but it doesn't look like it should be there. When we're happy with that, we can untick the visualize spots, control zero, there we can see all the positions we've got but as soon as we move away from the tool we can click any one of these and they liven up we can move them remove them but if we go back to the hand or the zoom tool they'll disappear now having that little move away from the image and then coming back I already want to put more contrast into this so I'm going to tweak it a little bit something like that I think maybe even try the contrast we're all going to do something slightly different and I've got a very dark base down there so I wonder if I can just bring that up a bit and the main weakness is the top so I'm going to pick up a graduated filter drag that down it's set to the previous setting so if I right click and reset the local correction settings hit the V key to lose that for a moment just tone it down a little bit not too much I don't want to lose this tip up here but maybe a little bit more tone in the sky just to balance better with the base of the image now I think I could do with a crop as well whether we do cropping in Photoshop or in camera raw I don't think it makes a great deal of differences one or two little white marks I may want to deal with here and once again I could have used the healing brush here and there's not a bad reason for doing so but I'll use the healing brush when we get this image open so for the now or for now I'm going to open this up into Photoshop as a smart object once the image appears on screen I'm not too happy with the pathway that's going through the foreground although it's dark there's no doubt 
that it's a little distracting. I think when we come to make the derivative we'll be cutting that off completely. But assuming we want to use the image in its entirety at the moment, well I think there's a couple of ways we can come at this. The first of those of course is just to crop it off. If I pick up my crop and click into the picture and I drag it up just about to the edge on the right of that pathway, it does leave me with a fairly nice oblong shape and it also allows the Angel of the North to be pretty well placed from a compositional point of view. Now I'm sure this is going to be the best option but just for a moment I'm going to come away from that crop and if we go to our layers remember we're working on a smart object here just for a moment I'm going to make a copy of that Control J but I also want to rasterize it I don't want to have that as a smart object because what I want to do next will not work with a smart object so we need to rasterize it what I'm going to do is to see how content aware would deal with that pathway down there so if I wanted to take out that entire pathway now I've not tried this in advance so what I'm doing here if it works will be just as surprising to you perhaps as it will be to me but let's see edit fill OK to content aware taking a few seconds because we're asking it to do a lot of work control D well it's just getting too good isn't it but having done that I do think we're going to get a slightly better image with greater impact if we give it a bit more of a panoramic look now we've already looked at doing that one way by actually extending the picture distorting the picture on this occasion because that crop works so well I'm going to go back and do what I suggested which was to crop it something like that maybe we don't need to bring the crop up quite so much I'm going to hit the tick on the options bar and if there was any tiny little highlights that stand out I would be dealing with those with the spot healing brush and you may have heard me say this before you can go absolutely crazy on this so the best thing to do is hit control zero look at what attracts you and then just deal with those that attract the attention because you can get a little bit too overwhelmed with every tiny highlight but it's only the big ones and I don't think there's many here so there we have a pretty good sparkling monochrome without very much effort at all in my introduction I said that one of the issues that I always find myself grappling with is how to make my photograph of a common or well photographed subject stand out from the crowd well sometimes I rely on good manipulation technique to do that in this instance I'm going to lean on a filter system to give me a hand the work that I've done so far I've got safely saved on my computer so when we go to the layers I've got both my smart object and the layer I'm going to be working on next saved so to take a bit of pressure off my computer with what we're about to do I'm going to drop this in the bin and to make sure I don't make a mistake and overwrite the first version I'll save this as number two when I add the flood filter I'm going to add a water effect in the foreground so I've got to decide where that water effect is going to start from now I can do that to some degree inside of the filter itself so I think all I need to do at the moment is to add some extra canvas at the bottom of my picture now I'm going to do that by going to my image menu canvas size now you can see the height of my canvas let me change that to inches or centimeters whichever is your favorite the height is 11 inches in height I'm going to double that I'm going to make that 22 I might even make it 23 but I'm going to anchor my image to the top and by doing that when I click OK all of the extra canvas when I hit control zero is now at the bottom of the screen 
So let's take a look at the flood filter. Up to my filters menu, the flood filter is made by a company called Flaming Pear. They make lots of filters, but I must say that this one is my favourite. When we pull up the flood, it takes just a few seconds. Remember we're working on a high resolution image here. There you can see the panel that appears. Now most of the core changes we're going to need to make are over on the left hand side. The one at the top is the most important because you can see at the moment that the horizon or where the water is meeting my image is a little bit wrong. So I need to move it and I'm not sure which way to move it and right was wrong so I need to move it left. But now you can see I can move the water up to a position that I feel looks pretty good. We also get the opportunity down below to affect the waviness, complexity, brilliance and blur of the water. Now I'm going to drop this down and see what the effect is because as we drop it down we get a beautiful reflection. Complexity, let's have a look. You can see we can put a bit of ripple on the water if we like or we can have it very very smooth. I'll think if you're going to use these filters you can have a go yourself at how much you apply these. These are all going to be personal sliders. In other words, you're all going to choose something different. But looking at that smallish thumbnail, that's more or less what I was looking to achieve. So I think the best thing I can do is to click OK and have a look at this in Photoshop. Now the filter has caused me a few problems here. First of all though, let's just take a look at the shape itself. I think I would like my shape to be a little more defined than that, so I may go back in a moment and take another look. If I zoom in on the image, you can see we've got a little bit of a problem here where it seems to have left an odd shape. So I wonder if moving up the horizon a little more would eliminate that. And of course I've got a problem here because I wonder if those a reflection of these people really need to be in there. Should I take those out or would they naturally be there? I'm not sure we would have a reflection of them. Yes we would probably have a reflection of the angel of the north because of its size but would we have that? Well we could take that away but we need to do a bit of work around here. But maybe we can get a better result before we start that work so the thing to do would be to hit control Z and go back into our filter and take a look at that horizon. So I just want to go up a little more. Whoops, see how it almost gets out of control here, but yeah, I think that's about it. I'll try to make a mental note of that. 42, I think I've gone up a bit further. And the complexity, I'm going to smooth that out a bit to try to make more of a straight mirror image. Something like that. And let's open it up again. Now by adding that extra canvas I've obviously changed the whole format aspect ratio of this picture. So I'm going to crop it because I want to look at it. I may even crop it as a square. So from the presets here I'm going to choose one to one. Let's move the crop shape around and see what I'm going to get. There I could make a really nice square shape. I think I will, I'm going to live with that, but now I need to look carefully at some of the repairs I need to do here. Now in normal circumstances if we did have this image in two halves and the bottom half was a mirror image of the top, we would have some dividing line between them. So I'm going to try to put one of those into the picture a little bit later. But before I do, and that would make these shapes a little better, but before I do, I'm going to have a go at dealing with a couple of those anyway. I'm going to zoom in. I'm concentrating on these shapes here. Now we've been using the Content Aware tool with a fair degree of success, so I'm going to try to use that here. 
So I'm going to pick up my polygonal lasso tool and go along the edge of that area which is just looking just a little bit odd. Edit, fill. Once we place the content aware in the drop down box, of course, it will remain there. So we can get quite used to clicking OK or even hitting the Enter key in place of that. And on this particular occasion, it let me down. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. Now, here's an odd thing that I've discovered recently. I did a bit of work on an image where the image was a locked layer. And the effect of Content Aware was slightly more effective than when I used the fill from the Edit menu. So, just as a trial, what I'm going to do here is to flatten that layer. And this time, I'm going to hit the Delete key and hit the Enter for Content Aware. Well, it didn't work that time, but last time it worked pretty well for me. So, back to square one, and I've got to think of another way of dealing with this. As I said, when we put a black line along the edge to distinguish the edge of what would be the centre of the frame, it's going to make those shapes a lot less obvious and more acceptable, because one half will be in the reflection, and the other half would be in the image itself. But I'd like to deal with them if I can. If I can't, then I may have to live with them. So I'm going to try the spot healing brush. And to make sure there's no risk of doing anything um, to the basic image, let's go to the layers. Put a new blank layer above it. We'll do all the cloning onto that. I've got the little box ticked to sample all layers, so I'm going to be sampling from the image to the blank layer, no risk at all. So I'm just going to click around the image and see what I can do. Because sometimes we don't have to do the entire problem area, sometimes we just need to mask certain parts of it. And don't forget I was talking earlier on about using the healing brush as well. The only difference between the two is with the healing brush we hold the ALT key and we take a sample. And sometimes the success of these tools is to change the sample point quite often to save getting any repetition in the repair that we're doing. Now I don't think that's going to be a problem. I think by the time we put the line down the centre, I think we'd get away with that pretty well. I'll leave that one and we'll see how that works. Now one of the problems I was saying earlier on was these people. Even if I leave the people in, which I probably think is right to do on reflection, excuse the pun, but certainly the shadows are not right, so that's definitely got to go. So while I've got the spot healing brush and another layer, let me try that. In fact, I'll go back to the spot healing brush, drop the brush size down, just want to get rid of those two shadows because they're clearly not right. A couple of touches there and I think I think we're okay. Let's hit control 0 and that is a lot better. Now let's deal with that center line because I think that's going to make a lot of difference. Now I'm going to use a new blank layer for this too. So before I forget, I'm going to go in and create it at the top of the stack. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to pick up this option, my single row marquee tool, and I need to put it in the center. And I'm going to use the little marks here. As I click, I can see exactly what the center is. Now, I'm not entirely sure how many pixels I need to add to this line. So I did a little bit of trial and error off camera, so to speak, and it seemed to me something between 15 and 20 pixels and we're working here with a 20 megapixel camera so that gives you some idea so I'm going to go to my edit menu stroke I'll try the 20 pixels put them on the center of the line but I don't think it matters too much where they go and click OK hit Control D to remove the selection there you can see what I mean if I hit Control 0 we've suddenly got 
a bank to the edge of our pond or lake. But it's a little too sharp, isn't it? So if I zoom back in, you can see what I mean. Of course, we've got it on a new layer. I'm going to go to my filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and all I want to do is to add sufficient blur so that that is believable, but not sharp. Now it's not coming together too badly. I've saved this a number of times and if you look up at the tab on the top left you'll see I'm up to version 4. So I've got lots of different versions saved including those last two layers with the repairs in the center. Now when I turn those repairs off you can see that although I've lost the uh, repair I did on the, sh uh, the shadows of the two people when you look at the problems I felt I had in the middle they're not quite so evident now that we've got that line in place but nevertheless I think I'll live with those and for the moment I'll select all three of those and either flatten them or merge them together and I did that with a right click rather than going up to the top right to the options of the layers so once again perhaps a couple of minutes time out Now there's a couple of things that attract my attention, but the main one is this shadow here. It now doesn't look quite right. Now it looked okay when we was viewing the image in its original form, but now it looks a bit odd. And I've been thinking about what I may do about it. I'm going to suggest the following. I'm going to make a new blank layer once again, so there's no risk. I'm going to zoom into that area and I'm going to make a curve selection to mirror that shape but from there so I'm going to pick up my polygonal lasso tool I need a selection along to that point then I need to just mirror that curve so I'm just making short steps click 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 taking a bit of care on this just to get that nice curve and heading down towards the edge just there and across and what I could do is go up further back now what I need now is a softness in this line to mirror this so if we look at the size of that shape go to the select mask there's the shape so we've just got to put the feather in that's about the same would you agree that's probably as close as I'll get? Somewhere around 6 or 7? I'm going to output that change to a selection back to the selection we've made by clicking OK. And now I'm going to hide that selection with Control H. Now remember we've got a selection on a new blank layer so we've got no risk whatsoever. There is a little bit of tone in here so what I could do is maybe pick up my clone stamp tool get a fairly big brush and if I push the flow rate up to a hundred percent I'm going to clone and paint may need the brush a bit smaller down here although I've got my selection in place which is protecting that so we should be okay and I do have a little mark here and there I think my selection is protecting that now and I've got a little slither of white down there I need to just make sure that's done now that doesn't look too bad at that size let's hit control zero and take a look now I think it looks better but we can just take a quick look with this on and off and make a final decision but of course we've got all those different versions saved but I think I'm going to move forward with that and I'll click to merge them or flatten those together now you can see by the instant change as the screen spins around that after accepting the change I just made and flattening the two layers together and sitting back in my chair almost immediately 
my brain started to sound that klaxon that you hear from time to time that says, no, you haven't got that quite right. So I've made a repair in a very simple way. Let me zoom in and I'll show you what I did. I just made a polygonal lasso selection right along and over the shadow and softened it to about the same degree as I did before, six or seven pixels. And I then cloned to a new blank layer. So to make sure I was doing the work without spoiling the image, I could always back away, always use a blank layer. But there, I think we've just about got away with it. Maybe one or two more touches of the clone, just light touches, but I think that now is far better. So after making that second change and flattening my layer together, I'm going to go back to my layers, just apply an adjustment layer. I think I'll choose my levels. I just want to give a bit more impact to the center of the image, but I don't want to take all of the density up here. It's why I'm using an adjustment layer, because once I've applied it and I go back into my layers, there's the mask with the adjustment layer. So if I hit Alt Backspace, I can flood my mask with black, which means I've adjusted the levels and then masked them all away. But that does allow me to switch to white, pick up a big, big brush, something like that, drop the flow rate down to about 10%, and I can now gradually bring a bit more density through in just those areas where I feel it needs it but without doing too much to the corners. You can just about see it going down a bit more impact on those clouds look but without losing that wing of the angel of the north and of course there does come a time when we have to accept that we're done and flatten to finish. Now I enjoy this type of creative work. The twists and turns as we try to fix problems we create by trying to do something creative, that's quite a common thing in our photography on the computer I find. And we learn an awful lot about how the software works and how best to use it. But when we get to the end of the exercise we've got a pretty good interesting monochrome image and to further the thought of a derivative I've added a few tones to this because this is a winter image and I think it's got a winter sort of look to it so it's another image that would lend itself well to a delicate blue tone but if we try other tones as well they seem to work equally as well so it's one of those images perhaps which is a little bit universal in that we can add almost any tone we wish and we don't spoil the image, we just create something different. But I think out of all of those, my favourite is either the pale blue or the mono. But I do find myself warming to the blue.